Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Norm's Friends. Welcome back. I know first, let me apologize. I've, two weeks ago, you know, I get so wrapped up in this. I forgot to mention that I wouldn't be here last week. I went down to Raleigh <laughs> to visit my sister. So there you have it. I went down for a week. It was a lot of fun. I hadn't seen it since before COVID. All right, of course, I'm David B., the readings guy. Finally, you can contact me at thereadingsguy.com. Yay! <laughs> 603-404-9338, Bifid, B-I-F-F-I-D, at yahoo.com. I have wonderful guests returning today, Eric and Carrie from New England Spirit Society. Bef and before we get over to them, naturally, I just want to make a few comments about what's been going on with the, well, the state of the union, the state of the country lately. The first thing I want to say, because I was, vi when I was visiting my sister, we watched maybe the last five minutes of the state of the union address. And I love it. See, they know the midterms are coming. But they're outright lying to the people. I wish they'd wake up. <laughs> He's over there. I love it. The last five minutes or whatever it was. And we're going to, after, after, the, after the election, actually, we're going to work on closing that southern border. He can close it with the same pen stroke that he opened it with. Mm -hmm. You don't have to wait <laughs> for the election, right? They don't have to work on it. No. He can continue building the wall instead of taking the money away to pay for illegal uh, aliens for their housing and health costs and giving right. them food and buying them clothes and paying their rent. They could build a wall to keep them out so they're outright lying to you. And th the other thing that just makes me laugh was this whole thing with the oil. Now he's blaming Putin, 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 Putin <laughs> and the Russians for the high oil prices. When he took office, the average price, it was only $2.09 where right. I live, yeah. right? But they were saying in just a year, so from, well, they, they were using January 6th, I like the benchmark there, the measuring point, but right, it was 225 was the national <laughs> average. This January 6th, it was 345 right. or something. So right then and there was that. I, all right, I know it went up because it's a joke, but the, uh, so, and just a few more things. This is how, this is how likable Biden is. He was going to, he wanted to do Zoom meetings or whatever you call them with yep. Saudi Arabia <coughs> and them to yep. beg them to produ produce more oil. They wouldn't accept his calls. Do you, I love it. Right. But, right. So uh, finally, and I've been calling, I don't know, come on, how many out there been calling you, the elected officials? I gave out the numbers. Right. You should be calling and complaining. I called them again about the thing. Finally, yesterday, no more Russian oil. But this is what gets me. You think he would open up drilling here. There's enough oil in Alaska, enough oil in Alaska just Alaska to meet all our energy right. needs and they can even export some. But he's got all that land closed off. Right. And the other thing, uh, Jane Pesky, she's lying too. Yes, she's over there about the high oil prices. Talk to the oil companies. There's 9,000 uh, leases that aren't being used. Right. What, she, what she failed to say is that's because they're on dry wells where there's no oil. So why do they want to drill there right. if there's no oil? But anyway, so much for that. They should <laughs> open the lands that they closed. I mean, it, you just can't go from being energy independent to all of a sudden, you know. And now he's going to what? Go to uh, Iran and Venezuela. Isn't that right. wonderful? Yeah, right. I mean, I, I don't get I just don't get it. I just don't get it. It's it's like it's so anti-American. Of course, really, what it is is it's Obama three, but <laughs> we won't go there. All right. right. So, <laughs> no, so since last time, no, finally we move on to the guests. So, Eric and Kerry, New England Spirit Society. What's been going on since last time you were here? Tell um, us about some great adventures. <laughs> actually, we have. Have we done an investigation in 22? We have uh, not. We have not. Yeah, things about, I mean, it's not, I mean, we've had plenty of uh, things t 
to look into. Um, but for some reason, 22 kind of just slowed down a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, we have plenty of people wanting our info. I mean, we've gone to a couple houses, talked to some people, and set things up. It's just right now we haven't had any investigations for 22. Um, we have a couple clients that we need to do uh, some uh, review with. Mm -hmm. But uh, here's the phone. Good afternoon. Welcome uh, to Norm's Friends. How are you doing today? Hi, this, I'm a first time caller. Ah, welcome. Thanks for calling. What's okay, I was have, I've been on vacation uh, for a while now, and I, I just got back yesterday. Uh, what's going on? Uh, what, what happened to, uh, with Norm? Norm passed away in, <gasps> was it oh. November, Scott? Uh, December. December. Norm passed away in December. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. So, so that's why now it's Norm's friends. It's only on from, we're on from five to six instead of four to six. Oh, okay, okay. Well, oh, God, I, I feel so, oh, I'm so, so sorry. Okay, well, uh, thank you for the information. You're very welcome. Thanks for okay. calling. That was quick. Right. All right, so. Yeah, so, I mean, we got some review to do and uh, some uh, cases to, uh, to work with some of our clients. But, uh. There's been a lot going on. We've been doing a lot of research. We've done uh, a parafest up in uh, um, Springvale, Sanford, Springvale, wow. uh, Maine. Nice, yeah. And uh, we made some really good contacts there. And uh, we have some UFO uh, evidence that we've uh, we've collaborated with another another crew that studies just on UFO stuff. And they looked at it and they were like, "This is amazing." Oh, you have the UFO? We have the UFO footage, and we wanted somebody else to look at it to see if we weren't seeing things. And No, where did you see? Because that interests me, so right, now we're going um, to have to explain. It was over the, over the skies <laughs> of Dover, New Hampshire. Get out. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and uh, so we have some good footage that we need to show the homeowners and stuff like that. But, it's yeah, it's, it's, really, it's really cool because, I mean. So without giving away all the detail about like when you say UFO actually uh, we have a uh, so on our we had a camera setting out outside watching the northern sky uh, just I mean you just had set it up or were you no we were had the homeowner had said that he had seen some oh, lights okay and he had actually shown us some phone video so we put a camera out in the direction that he's always seeing things and we actually happened to catch this cigar-shaped craft just appear out of nowhere on the camera and start moving from west heading east northeast and it was going it, it had to been on camera 10 minutes it just moved across the sky slow but you could see it like an emitting light on the rear and an emitting light on the front and it just moved across the sky and then we also have another footage, uh, footage of one descending coming wow. down out of the sky it looked identical it was coming down from the west and it was slowly ascending or descending and it went on the same track wow but i don't know how far away I, I have no way of measuring the distance size or anything um but we have tried to reproduce it with um lights from uh, cars lights from i mean we we cannot reproduce this we uh, cannot fun. debunk it Good afternoon. Welcome for welcome for calling Norm's <laughs> friends. How are you today? Fine. Hi, Dave. Hey. Hi, Eric. Hi, Hi. Jerry. How are you? <laughs> Good. How are you, hon? I'm fine. We can tell. Love this weather or what? Yes. Uh huh. <laughs> it's still winter. Why not? Bring it on. Oh. Huh? Bring. When are we gonna get spring? And what is it? Another two weeks. Yeah, Another I was say two, two weeks. weeks. Another yeah, two weeks, that's all. <laughs> it'll be here before you well, know it. Pretty soon before you know it, it'll be St. Patty's Day. That's right. right. Hey, did you miss me last week? <laughs> yes, I did. All right. Can you give me a reading, please? I can. I'll <laughs> give you a reading coming right up. Let's see what happens today. I kind of get a general sense, but and, and then on the same, uh, same card, I don't get a general sense. So let's see what happens. I'll pick out three cards, and we'll see what they say for you. It's 
quiet. I can hear what we just said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like deja vu. I know, huh? <laughs> All right. Wee wee. What? Wee wee. Wee wee. Wee wee. I know. All right. No more whippy pies. All right. I know. So. All right, here we are. We start off with the Queen of Swords. Of course, we know whatever you decide to partake in or to go after, we already know. See, you have no problem, you know, with cutting the ties with the past and letting go of the past and, you know, thinking everything out and, you know, spending time looking at the pros, looking at the cons and, you know, using your wisdom and you know you're listening to your soul for for all that good stuff you know you get messages you know as they say your gut your gut talks to you but you realize it i know you do and, you know and of course you and when you look forward like i said when you cut ties with the past when you look forward all you see is nice clear vision and brightness and happiness ahead of you. So and we go from there. And then, of course, here we are with the King of Cups. So what's going on? It looks like I'm going to stick my neck out, which I very rarely do. <laughs> so I don't. <laughs> Who wants to be wrong? <laughs> so I'm going to say that some relationship doesn't have to be a romantic relationship, but, you know, this is someone who you have... Uh, a real, real, real uh, strong emotional tie to whether it's could be your best friend, could be a lover, could be your next door neighbor, you know, someone that you're sort of really on the same wavelength with. There, I also see, you know, that's around, so that's very good. But the last. <laughs> The, but, right, there's always a but. The last card I is... I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> so and then we have the Four of Swords, all right? So I'm going to say, after all this, you know, going back, not because I, I don't look at all three cards at the same time. So going back to where we began about breaking ties with the past. Perhaps the, there's something emotionally that you are sort of mm, a little bit disillusioned sh with, shall we say, all right? So what it's telling you, this card here is, you know, there's a couple of things on your mind, but there's one in particular that I'm going to say before you act on it, really, you know, give it some thought, you know, re really relax about it, just take some alone time, you know, and think it over and going back to the first card again, weigh out all the pros and cons and, you know, because right now I'm thinking in your mind, I'm getting the sense that you want to make a big drastic change, but perhaps you might want to just, you know, make a small minor adjustment. So there you have it. So. I'm always adjusting things. See? I'm always looking forward to beautiful things. You, well, I could tell. I mean, no doubt about it. How can you not, bud? <laughs> <laughs> this is with someone in particular, though. <laughs> oh, who's that? Well, I don't know. Somebody that you're sort of, like I said, you know, you're really in tune with and on the same wavelength. It could be, you know... Your sister, like I said, it could be your sister, it could be your best friend, it could be your next door neighbor or a neighbor. So, uh -huh. neighbor, excuse me. Oh, so, my neighbor and I always helping out each other. Well, there you go. So, perhaps maybe, you, you know, maybe she's thinking... Very good you, people. There you are. See that? So... Not only me, that person's very nice, too, to see, both of us. There, well, there you are. So, but still, maybe, you know, if there's an adjustment, so maybe it could be a, you know, a, a welcoming adjustment as opposed to a, you know, sort of pushing away adjustment. Because, right, I, what I did say, you know, 
you break them from the path. So it doesn't necessarily mean, you know, see you later, right? Could be come closer. So there you have it. Oh, yeah. Yeah? No? Oh, yeah. There you have it. All we have is each other with everything going on in this world. Mm. We have to take care of each other. You know that. Tell me. Well, you're not kidding. And I do. I try to, <laughs> you know, I try to lift everybody's spirit up. I always what happened to you last week? <laughs> well, obviously someone wasn't watching the beginning of the show. Last week, I apologize. The two weeks ago, I forgot to mention that I wouldn't be here last week. I went down to Raleigh to visit my sister, who I haven't seen since before COVID. Well, I'm very happy you did that. I bet you I, had a good time. I had a blast. Yeah, I had a blast. She's older. I'm the baby, by the way, so. <laughs> and she's the oldest, so I, I did. I can tell you the baby. <laughs> you have to grow some hair. <laughs> <laughs> right. I've been trying. I'm not having much luck, but. <laughs> right. I told you. Busy grass don't grow on busy streets. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And like you said, no more whippy. That's right. That's right. Although, <laughs> although I did go to the gym this morning. Don't they have to put the view on? Why? I don't know. And I look up. I'm doing a, Nau a Nautilus machine, and there she is. That's nice. That's very, yeah. very nice. No, I really enjoy your show and everything. And, you know, and I like the people that you have on and everything. And, Thank you. Know, you, you have a wonderful, wonderful night. Thanks. And everything. And you. And thank you for the reading. And thanks for calling. We'll see ya. Yep, keep up the good work. Thank you. <coughs> bye bye. Goodbye. Right. <laughs> nice meeting you. Yeah. <laughs> Did I get it? Yeah. She's uh, <laughs> she's calls every week. She's a sweetheart. But the and how can you not feel yeah, that? She's, huh? She's that, right. Full energy. <laughs> yeah, I love it. All right. So you have this UFO evidence, yep. and you can't tell the distance or, or no, whatever. Not, I have no way of uh, I have no way of grading the distance because of the where it is in the sky. Um, I mean and unfortunately we we were inside doing an investigation when the when yeah. the evidence was caught. Yeah. So I can't look at it and uh, and say whereabouts in the sky it was. Um, I mean it could have been twenty miles away, it could have been ten miles away, it could have been twenty feet away. Uh, but so now, is it is it focused or is it out of focus? No, this it's, footage? It's, it is. It is nice and focused. Nice. Um, the only thing that looks lightly distorted would be the lights that are emitting from the rear. And I'm, I don't know. It, it would if somebody was looking at it, they'd be like, "Oh, that's that's the propulsion system." Don't know, um, but it. It was just, it was there. I mean, unfortunately, we didn't have any sound on that camera, so we couldn't get any uh, uh, sound, but um, there was a lot of things that went on. Um, we had, uh, when I when I clipped the uh, video, I clipped it and called it Close Call. We had a video, uh, we were out there with a camera, the whole group, and we actually saw a, what we're gonna call a unidentified light in the sky, almost hit an airplane. Wow. Because, I mean, it came down and it diverted. Wow. Like it was almost a mid-air collision. Huh. And we caught, a, we caught a small clip of that on camera. Wow, I'm glad I wasn't on the plane and happened to look <laughs> right? out the window. <laughs> right, and there's a, there's, I wouldn't say it's a major airport there in Newington, but there's an Air National Guard base with civilian traffic and cargo airplanes along with, uh, uh, you know, personal aircraft that fly in and out of there. So, I mean, that would be... Wow, but you know, I, it's it's. I'm amazed at it's in New Hampshire because you know when I was a kid, I mean a kid, growing up, I grade school, junior high school. There would always be stories in the paper about UFOs right. in New Hampshire. Right, and, and matter of fact, this coming September, the uh, the Exeter UFO Festival is coming back. Uh, we've been waiting two years for it. And it, when is it again? It's uh, I don't know the exact date, oh, but it's no. in September. But um, I can, it, you just you look up U uh, Exeter UFO Festival on, on Google, and it'll give you the right times. In but, September, though. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And we yeah. will be there as a group. We're going to try to run a table. Um, nice. But, yeah. It's uh, in the stage that all the performers—well, they're not performers. Excuse me. 
the guests, that the speaking guests, the stage that they actually talk on is really cool because Abraham Lincoln actually walked on that stage. And wow, that is yeah, cool. So, but uh, yeah, imagine there's a, the energy in there. I'm yeah. serious. No, it's yeah. it's it's, it, it's really cool because you walk in there and it's like you you go back in time. Yeah, I would um, imagine you can feel it. But I mean, when I was nine years old, I saw my first UFO, um, and then I've seen. I've actually never, until this video evidence, personally have never seen an actual craft. I've always seen lights. But when I was nine years old, I used to, I grew up in Kittery, Maine, across from, uh, you know, we had Pease Air Force yeah. Base over here, at Portland Naval Shipyard right here. And here I am living in Kittery, and I'm looking up in the sky, you know, and I'm home alone at nine years old back when you could do that. Right, that's right. <laughs> Before that's they allowed. take you away. <laughs> right? right. So <laughs> I'm, I just, I, some yeah. reason I will, I walk outside and I look up and I see a star, and then all of a sudden it goes off to my right. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. And then it comes back. I'm like, that's kind of weird don't do that. and then it goes <laughs> to the right again it goes to the left and all of a sudden it goes woof and I'm like when, when it left at breakneck speed I'm like I'm going back in the house that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, I can remember it's got to be over 30 years ago but they were there was these all of a sudden all these reports about UFOs in New Hampshire <laughs> I can remember it was a, either a Friday or a Saturday me Myself and my niece, we decide we're going to drive up to see if we could see one, but we didn't. We drove way up past the north, mm. you know, up around yep. that way, the valley or whatever. But yeah. we didn't luck out. Yeah, no, I've uh, I've seen a lot. Even when I was in the service, I saw some things that were very questionable. <laughs> wow. And, uh, yeah. Even to the point where I was told by my commanding officer not to make a report on it. Really? Yep. Huh, that's peculiar. Now, let me ask you this, if you have any take on this. Why do you think that the UFOs, because if you notice, they're around sort of like, you know, air, airports and uh, military uh, I, I, installations. If they are foreign to this planet, I think they're kind of watching what we're developing and how we're developing. Um, you know, because there's multiple theories. Some people believe that it's actually us. Either either it's a, a man-made craft coming back in time. Uh, you know, there's there's multiple different thoughts. But I honestly think the reason why they Pease was a uh, was a was a sack base. It had nuclear weapons. Uh, of course, the naval shipyard services nuclear submarines. Everything's cold over there, but they still have nuclear reactors. That, you know. And it's it, it's a I've seen things I've walked when I was a firefighter at the shipyard, I had walked out mm -hmm. and looked up one day and saw three orbs hovering over the shipyard and all of a sudden just start moving off. Well, how big were they? The orbs? Um, they were they were up there. So I mean, it, uh -huh. they weren't birds because I, you're not supposed to record on the shipyard. But I may <laughs> have may not have hit the phone video <laughs> by accident, <laughs> and they yeah because you could see them they were actually when they left they were actually tumbling oh, in, wow. in unison, and uh, so oh. I think they just I think they're watching what what's going on with us. And, mm -hmm. uh, of course, you got these the the Navy pilots that are uh, watching the, the tic tac, you know I, I don't I don't know if those are manned or unmanned because the way they move. I don't see anybody, you know, without some type of inertial dampeners, you know, yeah. surviving those kind of G's, but. Wow. Yeah, it's interesting. Very interesting. I was just, how do you like our new mics? I like them. Uh-huh. I like them. Nice. Yeah. That's We're moving up a little. I, I like the, uh, the, the <laughs> retro ones, too, though. It makes you kind of, makes you feel like we're singing like the, uh. Those remi those mics remind me of Johnny Carson, John the right? Tonight Show with Johnny right? Carson, right? Or, or doing some rockabilly mics? songs. <laughs> that's, right. <laughs> that's right, exactly right. The uh, when I was a kid, it was on TV, the, the Grand Ole Opry, but the yeah. real Grand Ole Opry, right. not the new amusement park right. facility yeah. that when it was in the church. Right, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, same thing. Well, so let me now. How your name's Eric, but how come you? Your jersey says boats. So I was a bosun's mate in the Navy. Oh, okay. Um, uh, and right. every bosun's mate in the Navy, or even the puddle pirates, 
uh, the Coast Guard are called they call each other boats. It's uh-huh. it's 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 one of the I might be a tad bit biased, but it's one of the harder rates in the Navy to, because I mean we do everything. We do we drive the ships, we do the underway replenishments, we do the flight deck, we do all the maintenance on the boat, we do all the security well not all the security, but we help with security on the boat. We man gun stations, we man fire stations, we just do everything. Mm-hmm. So we're like, uh, we're uh, jack of all trades. And we work 18 hour days where all the other guys get to get to work six or 12s and they get wow. to go to sleep, we're up. <laughs> uh, we could come off a of watch and automatically have to go on to an our underway replenishment where two ships are actually tie- tied together underway on the open ocean, delivering on cable uh, oh, wow. Supplies back and forth. Yeah, it's uh, it's actually really cool to watch. Yeah, if, it is. yeah. That would but be. I mean, we can we could be sitting there six hours alongside, and uh, but taking so off. So flight. moving or stationary? No, no, moving. we're moving. Oh, we're wow. con- constantly moving, and, and you. Uh, that couldn't have been easy. <laughs> yeah, you, you you're literally. We'll see. And you know, there's a little bit of there's a little bit of give on the, yeah. on the there's a tensioner system and everything, but when the ships will rock apart. But you're probably maybe 100 120 feet apart wow. two ships just cruising right along they're working on the same speed there's a there's a guy who's driving he's his his job is to pay right attention to the he pays right attention to the compass he follows a magnetic course he doesn't he doesn't stray from that there's a guy who's on the what they call the lee helm and he's constantly looking at the other ship on a spot on the other ship and he's he's oh, wow. he's he's adjusting mm-hmm. the throttle to to make sure that they're all traveling at the same speed so I mean, it's really cool. Then that we're is. down there getting soaked because the two ships, <laughs> the the waves from in between come up and come up over the deck. But yeah, it's you should do. You should watch a video someday. You just Google, uh, not Google, but dot, go to YouTube and type what type in U.S. Navy underway replenishment. Huh. Um, yeah, because well, there's this. You know, you got the vert rep, which is the helicopters, and the unrep, which is where we're actually tied together. Huh. But uh, to carry, to not get sidetracked. So, when I was a firefighter at the Porcelain Naval Shipyard, there was there was more than one Eric, and um, we, they would get us confused because they would say, they'd yell for Eric and we'd both oh. respond. <laughs> so they started calling me boats because uh. there was a we had a guy that was in the Marines and he was you know fleet Marine so he knew who the bosun's mate were, so he and it just it just stuck and it's moved oh, on. Yeah. I mean, and I think more people actually know me as boats than they do as Eric, because wow. when I got right. injured, when I got injured uh, in a fire, you know, somebody said that you know Hardy got uh, injured. And they're like, who? They're like boats. Oh, you know, they don't even know who I. You know, they only know me as boats. It's just uh, really weird, but it's kind of cool. That is next time. The next time you're on, I'll introduce you as boats. Instead you can introduce. I, I, I've been gone. I've been called many names. So, <laughs> like we all have, I'm right? sure, right? I know. Hey, I have a question for you. No, all the um, tapes or video or whatever it is that you have from these, what's the proper term to use? Investigation. Investigations that you do. Do you ever, you know, even we'll say after several times, you watch it, you watch it, and then all of a sudden, you see, do you discover something new in it? Like um, a real aha! How did I miss that? Yeah, as a matter of fact, our very first investigation that we did as New England Spirit Society, we had gone through and we had pretty much wrapped everything up. And um, I get a phone call from Jamie, and she's excited. She's like, she's like, you you got to watch this. I'm like, I've already watched that camera. She goes, No, you got to watch this. So, and she plays this video. Or she sends, she tells me times. She gives me a timestamp of the video to watch, and it it's outside. The wind has to be blowing 20, 30 miles an hour at least. I mean, it was oh, yeah, it, it was, was blowing, windy that night. and I mean, so it couldn't have been just an ordinary bird. This thing comes into camera shot, stops, hovers, moves around a little bit, and does some dancing, and then wow, and then a couple more come in. It's like uh, so we kind of think they may be like a fay, um, but it was really weird because we had we seen an actual bird come through, and the way that the wind was blowing, a bird was having a hard time mm-hmm. moving. 
and this didn't have any 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 wings I mean we've had a uh, we had somebody look at it and they say they th they feel it's a bird but honestly I don't think it's a bird it, it held itself in place in 20 mile hour sustained winds hmm. and it was back in January of 21 and it was it was just a howler of a night wow but yeah, that's when great. I moved up to New Hampshire January Is it? 21 well, that might go. have been welcoming me right there you go <laughs> Wow. Hey, I have a question for Carrie. Carrie, I see a plaque over there. What is it that you have over there? That is um, something I did up um, for Norm. Um, I don't know if you can see that. After his death. After, yeah, afterwards. Um, my mother came up with the idea of doing it on a oh, buoy so. that I've been painting. Ah, uh, right yeah. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> um, no. But I decided to do it on a flat surface versus doing it on a buoy because they're more round, mm -hmm. and I thought the desk would look better. Yeah, right, well, on a flat surface. Right, yeah, it created, so yeah. I have done this up for either Scott or the family or the show. So whoever wants to take ownership of it, I like it, and I like this. I don't know if you did it on purpose, I but did. this oh, the heart that mm -hmm. I like the very nice. I did do we're, that on purpose. <laughs> we'll give it to Scott. I'm sure Scott will appreciate it. Very nice. Look at that. Well, <laughs> uh, you didn't sign it, Carrie. It's on the back. Oh, okay. Very good. All right. Yep. Just checking. Yeah. <laughs> Just checking. I made sure I Very did that nice. before I left the house. <laughs> Very nice. I could never do it. I don't have no artistic ability at all. I mean, I mean, I can draw stick figures. Yeah, I can't. You know, that's, <laughs> I that's can't draw. I have to have some sort of template to go by, oh, the, like yeah. an outline. The painting, I can. Huh. If I can well. see it, I can paint it. Very nice. It is. He's still around, by, yes. by Absolutely. the way. He that, is I think still that's around. one of the reasons why she made everything in a... Uh, in a there's I even got his Buddha. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <You know. laughs> Yeah, that's right. The Buddha. It's yeah. <laughs> all it's right there all the time. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. So between now, now what, what do you do when you don't have investigations? Do you do anything on your own? Do you say like, you know, Alexa? Oh, phone. <laughs> Good afternoon. Thanks for calling, Norm's friends. How are you today? I'm good. This is Jamie from New England Spirit Society. <laughs> I know you. Hey. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Good. Hi, Baxter. Baxter and who else? Oh, boy. <laughs> Perfect time there's for two. Right. Yes, uh, there is two. I can't remember the other one. Oh. Yeah. I, f um, I can't remember the other dog's name, Jamie. Wow. How, so what happened? You didn't, you didn't come in with your comrades here. Are your colleagues, no, excuse I me, comrades? No, I so I wasn't going to be able to make it. Ah. Uh. But you guys are looking good. It's, it's <laughs> funny, you guys started talking about uh, uh, our first case, and I remember that clearly because I was reviewing something he had already reviewed to mm -hmm. ask me to look at something else, and I saw that, and I'm like, what is <laughs> So... Um, now, how much, how often does something like that happen to you? That's happened a few times, because sometimes one person will be watching it, but they'll concentrate on, like, one area. We all see things differently. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got another case going on right now that I asked him to review a clip of footage because I just, I knew I was missing something, and my eyes just weren't adjusting to what I thought I was seeing. And he took a look at it, and sure enough, he was able to find a couple different pieces of evidence that I was completely missing. Someone's jealous that you're on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. It's just like having a toddler around. <laughs> wow. He, sound, he sounds big. Yeah, he's a uh, great name. Oh. <laughs> Not bad. That's Carrie's best friend. Yes. yes. Ah. Mine, too, with that tail. Yeah, and what's it? Is well, that Baxter or is Baxter the now. other one? No, oh, Baxter's the big, the the big, the big. The uh, Dane. Oh, and who's the yappier one? The, the yappy background one. Um, the actually, yappy one. She's a ebony. She's a ebony. tiny dog. She's I call her a punta pup. <laughs> a what? 
Puntapot. Puntapot. She's a small dog. Oh, very good. Perfect size for Tegan. <laughs> is it snowing where you are? It is, which was a surprise. I didn't know we were expecting snow today. We weren't. <laughs> we weren't either until, well... It was supposed to be later on the night. I thought it was right. supposed to be... Yeah, it was supposed to be Because I have just look, I look on... The, I have the AccuWeather app, so that's what I... When I get up, that's one of the first right. things I do. But it said it was... I think it was supposed to only be between 9 p.m. to 1 a.m. Right. Yeah. And it said little to no accumulation. But it's New England, so. Right, exa- right. I know. They, were, they, they can be wrong and get away with it. Yeah. Give it a minute. I know. So when are you, you going to hook these guys up with another investigation? Well, we have, um, we have two we're trying to get finished up. And ah. then, um, you know, it, you, it, you get your lulls and your busy times. And right now we're in a lull, which is good. Because right. it's giving us a chance to play catch up. <laughs> Good. Because we were getting hit. What did we have, guys? Like five, six back to back. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And then luckily, uh, her and I ended up with COVID, so uh, that took. Luckily. Us up. Yeah. Well, I mean during the low time. <laughs> oh. oh, oh. Yeah. Uh, during during the low. And. Uh, Definitely was lucky. <laughs> yeah. So uh, well, she said, "Here, hold my beer. Watch this." <laughs> and uh, she she took the COVID to a whole new level. Well, um, apparently, it couldn't play by itself. I had to bring them right? over with it. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so luckily it happened during the downtime because oh. I mean that really would have that would have taken two people out of actually three people out of action because if we were sick, then our daughter Brittany wouldn't be able to help out because she'd be in the quarantine bubble as well. Wow. So yeah. <laughs> imagine that. But you know that's another. And I would have had. We would have had to fire all three of them. So, right. You know. Oh no. Well, you yeah, right. And you didn't want to do that. But She's a slave driver. Well, you need one around. <laughs> you need one. I know. Crack that. Whip. Whip. And she's got the backs to the back are up. Right. So it's either right, you know. Like hey. Listen or else. <laughs> See, she knows what she's doing. <laughs> but you know that's another re- right. That's another reason why I think all of a sudden. It's like people aren't doing this or people aren't doing that. You know why? Because now all of a sudden, and of course it's because of the midterms, mm. no more COVID, no <laughs> more mask mandates. So people, right. you know, they really, they're, they're having difficulty readjusting to, way, right. to the way they were two years ago. It's like they have all this newfound freedom. It's like, right. oh, it's like well, a breath of fresh air hey, for everyone. Hey, listen, everybody. I got to let you guys go. All right. Thanks give, for taking my call. Have a great night. Carrie, Eric. Drive safe their boat. Give give Baxter a goodie for me. I will. All right. Thanks for calling. <laughs> bye. bye. All right. Bye. <laughs> there you go. So she's gonna crack crack the whip on you. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, in between yeah. in between investigations, we do a lot of we do a lot of uh, research um, as far as you know new things that are coming about. We we try to stay. We started. We try to stay up with the Joneses, mm-hmm. as far as technology, as far as you know, theories and stuff that are going on. And I mean, it, it's an ever-evolving um, world, in, as far as is trying to keep up with. I mean, you got everything that falls under the umbrella. Paranormal is just paranormal. Then you got you know you got your ghost investigations. You got is cryptozoology. You got your UFOs. I mean, you know, you got your wow. Yeah, I mean, so we try to we try to pay attention to everything. You know, um, I like the UFOs. Paula is into the Bigfoot. You know, and we're all into the. Oh, my sister's into that. She had me watching this stuff. I forgot what right? channel it was on. It was really interesting, and some of the footage was incredible. Right. That, that they were showing, it was just amazing. <clears throat> and uh, one of the bigger things that we uh, we. Paul and I like to watch is it's a it's a series called Missing 411 and um, I'm gonna have a brain fart on who the uh, who the actual author is he was he used to be a police officer and he's actually a detective and he went out nationwide all the national parks and he put a pin and he's doing a study on all the missing mm-hmm. people in all the national parks and how they ended up missing, the stories behind it. I mean, he has gone through and done a ton of research. So you can find these. They, he has the missing 411s. Uh, he has a, I think you can find one of them on uh, 
Netflix. Some of them are on, on books, so I mean you can read about them or you can do audio book on them. But it's amazing to listen to these stories because he'll do a story about the person. He'll, you know, what they, what they did in life as far as you know, like life, work, mm -hmm. uh, what their skill level was, and then they'll talk about where they were found, from where they were, you know, from where they set off. I mean, it's crazy how some of these people mm -hmm. are found miles and miles away from where they should have been, and to get where mm -hmm. they went they would have had to climb over mountains that nobody would be able to trek in the middle of the winter, but they're found on the other wow. side of a mountain range. Huh. In bare feet. Wow. You know, how do they, you know, how do they do this? So, I mean, it's crazy. It's, it that really is. is. I mean, there's, there's, a, there's enough to keep, you, keep us busy on research and uh, just studying alone. But. Nice. So, I have another question for you now. When you're on an investigation and Spirits? Is it always you're looking for spirits? Is that what you call them? Or we call them entities, spirit. whatever. Well, we, we, we call them spirits because um, I mean, if you look at it, everything, pretty much has a spirit. Everything uh, does have it. Yeah, every living thing does. Right. Yeah. But I mean, there are some things that are out there that you know, you know, you got, you know, you got your different things. I mean, you have your past humans. You have your your woodland creatures. You have your elementals. I mean, you have, there's a little bit of everything going on out there, you know, and so. So now when you're doing that type of investigation, I'm just curious, and, you know, somebody calls and says, you know, they think there's an entity there, a spirit, and when you go there and set up and record, do you ever sort of like get UF, you know what I mean, get UFOs in there after when you're reviewing something, say, well, so. Because I'm one of those, you know, we'll say like, you know, New England spirit, you're you're open to it, so that's why you're more likely to perceive them and and right. see it, you know, see it. So we actually go when somebody calls us. Say if you were to call us and say you had a, you had you know something going on in your house, we're actually going to visit with you. Yeah. Oh, here comes. Good afternoon. Welcome to Norm's Friends. How are you today? Getting yourself. I'm very well. What can we do for you? Oh, yeah, I'm calling for the number so to see if I could get a reading. Well, you would like a reading. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw three cards. You have a beautiful voice, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to draw three okay. cards. It is. It's nice and comforting. <laughs> I'm going to draw three cards, and that's we'll see what's going on for you. All right. I'm, gonna, if I'm off and on because I'm at work. So I'm like hiding over here. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. Well, you got a lot of energy going on around you. A lot, a lot of energy. All right. So naturally, we start with strength. So, and strength with you, it's. I'm getting this. I'm gonna say you want to undertake a new endeavor. Uh, perhaps maybe even at work so you don't have to hide when you make phone calls <laughs> for readings. But, you know, <laughs> you have the strength and wh what you can do with it, knowing that you have the strength uh, to overcome all obstacles and you really do think about it and not that you're going to, you know, when you put your mind to it, it's not that you're going to overcome them in one day, but you have that you can ride sort of the cycle and you know, while you're riding that cycle, you can sort of bring it to where you want it to go a lot faster than you realize that you can. And the reason you can do that is because, you know, the next card as you see here, it's the fool. Look at, he's on the edge of the cliff. He doesn't have a care in the world and that's you. You got all this strength. You, you want to move in a different direction and you're not afraid to do it. You, you know, you're not afraid of the consequences in the sense that, you know, it might not end up exactly where you want it to be, but you're still saying, you know, you just want to move, you know, you want to go from point A to point B, you're going to take that first step. Once you take that first step, you're setting everything in motion and you're rearing to go, and that's good. And, of course, 
what do we have at the end? The queen of pentacles. Pentacles is, you know, work, it's material things, it's all that stuff. So we're just going to say this is personal, you know, inner, uh, emotional type of stuff where you're moving around. So you have the queen of pentacles. Everything is going to turn out, you're going to be nice, you're going to feel fulfilled, you're going to feel really, really good about, you know, making the effort to sort of go in the path that you have your sight set on and it's going to be very fruitful for you so whatever it is you're thinking of doing and going go for it you'll be pleasantly okay. surprised you'll be delighted actually so thank you you're very welcome any questions and have a great night okay no, great. Uh, just wanted to say um uh i I got this with this um, channel through Norman, because I knew Norman many years ago. Uh huh. Yeah. So I'm glad that you guys are doing what he loved. So thank you very much. He did. You're very welcome. Thanks for calling. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye bye. Have bye. a good night. No, she's working. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. well, I used to love my job. <laughs> I did up until, well, I was a court steno. I did, but after, mm. you know. 30, 35 years, it's like, ugh. Yeah, I imagine. You know, it's very stressful, so. Especially mm. typing on that little machine. Right, right but then I, uh, then I transitioned because I got carpal tunnel. They call it voice writing. You put this steno mask and you right. just repeat everything, mm. which is lucky me because my jaw's <laughs> built for, <laughs> you know, machine gun right. speed, so. <laughs> <coughs> that was well by me, but I still do it. I just told, as a matter of fact, just today I told him, you know, I gave him the word. I said, just so you know, I said, I've been doing this for it's over 40 years now. I said, you know, I says, just so you know, not too much longer, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Right. Well, because I, I ca all I do now is I just cover grand jury down in mass. But even the covered grand jury, it's you can't just call any court steno in to cover it. They have to file a motion. You have to go be, imagine you have to go before a judge. So, wow. before you can go in there. And, you know, it's a shame you can't mention anything, what goes on in grand jury. But, you know, if I only knew someone in Hollywood did have so many fantastic <laughs> CSI episodes, right? I'm telling you. Plus, one of them, one of them was, and it is, it's bragging, but remember the Marathon Bombers? Yep. This is just the Middlesex County part on the other side of the river from when they murdered the MIT uh, policeman, the yep. campus, and they hijacked the car. I did three days of that. So you hear all of, you know, I only got part of the, the murder th scene because that was before. I did three days. I got the end of it, and then I get... You get, it, like we'll say, when they hijack the car, you get everything. You don't just get it happen at like 8, 19 p.m. Right. It happened at 8, 19 and 26 seconds. And, right. you know, you get all that. And, yep. you know, they what time they got to the pump, how many gallons of gas they got, how long they were there. <laughs> mm. You know, you get every little detail. It's kind of very interesting and stuff, you know, and how you about you. There's a lot more about when they found him in the boat that they, they still never said to this day. Right. Yeah, that I, you know, if they did another Boston Marathon bomber movie, I'm sticking my neck out. It's like, hey, <laughs> I got goodies for you, but I'm gonna want some. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm gonna want some Dunkin's in really, return. Yeah, that was that was one of the best on there, but hmm. so that's why they do that. So, now you all you tell you. Tell us all about we don't we don't well we got a little bit of time left but you know introduce yourselves again. Well, I'm Eric Hardy. This Carrie Hardy. I've never met her. Also in my known day. as Boats. <laughs> never met her a day in my life. Don't know who <laughs> she is. Just no, picked her up. <laughs> she's Hitchhiking? my Uber driver. Yeah, she's my no. Uber driver. Oh, all right. <laughs> I'm the Uber. Yeah, she's been my Uber Uber driver for 30 years now. All right, and they, she's and be 31. And how can they get in contact when they want investigations done? So for you can get a hold of us uh, by, uh, you can call me directly at 207-451-3069. Uh, 
Um, this number should be listed on our website. We also have New England Spirit Society org. There's a contact form in there where you can actually type in your information and you know if you want contact. I mean you can anyone can write a contact letter even if they just have a, a simple question about equipment. If they if they're trying out the paranormal and they want to know about simple equipment, I mean you can fill out a contact letter. Uh, there is a chat box in there. Um, I try to, as soon as I find out that there's somebody on the site because I get an alert, I try to go to the site and wait and see if they want to chat because um, I don't have a life. But <laughs> <laughs> um, no, that's because um, you enjoy what you do. Right. That's well, and why, you can right? also yeah, yeah. Well, that you know, and you can also get find us. Just go into Facebook and type in New England Spirit Society, and we have a uh, we have a uh, Facebook site that uh, people can join in and uh, chat with us and follow us along and everything it's nice now when they if they will contact you can they just say like do you want to come check out my property I think it's haunted yeah it we they, they can start with that but I mean we'll have questions on the other end um, uh, you know we're not just gonna just come right over I mean we have to find yeah. out you know find out a little 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 a little backstory what's going on and mm -hmm. you know I mean we've had instances where we were called and you know somebody was like you know every night at this time I hear this and come to find out that it was you know a raccoon in the attic <laughs> you know so, I yeah. mean we we will go out of our way to find out and help the person out because yeah. it, it's not just about you know investigating somebody out there has a need yeah somebody mm -hmm. out there you know, this is you know this could freak somebody out. This you know people can be concerned about what's going on, and it's our respons <clears throat> it's our responsibility to help them. Mm -hmm. It's our responsibility to make sure that we go out of our way to find out everything we can and give them and you know give them the information that we found. Yeah. Yes. So we put a camera up in your attic, and this is what we found. We found that you have a family of raccoons <laughs> living up there. You know, and yeah. you won't believe how you know. Okay few <laughs> you know the, the world is the world is lifted off their shoulders oh, at yes. that point mm -hmm. you know um, <coughs> we've uh, we, we've been to places where you know you know the, the water is just not flowing properly on the property um, mm. and Paula will work on um, working with the family you know and uh, she has great contacts and great this huge ever-growing library of, of knowledge and books and everything and she will help try to get the property righted because when she Paula comes in she's one of our, our uh, intuitives and her sister come in their their main focus is fix the property mm -hmm. yeah yes they have concerned about the people but if you can fix the property nine times out of ten you fix the problem and you know and then jamie myself carrie Brittany, um ashley and uh, melissa. melissa will go in and we actually do the investigations um mm -hmm. ashley is a, she is phenomenal at doing i used to do uh background investigations for our old the old group that we were in and this girl blows me <laughs> away she is phenomenal we all we give we give her an address. We don't tell her anything about what's going on. We give her an address, and she just goes to town. I don't she, know how she does it. I've tried it. <laughs> she pulls. She gets all the information. She doesn't. She doesn't just do the property. She'll expand, you know, because in the old days, if it's this is an old problem, the property wasn't just one acre. That's you know, so true, she'll yeah. she'll expand. Um, so we get a phone call, and if we're actually going to start off an investigation, we give. The two intuitives, and uh, Paula and Pam, and um, Ashley, we just give them a uh, an address. We give them no information whatsoever about what's going on, and they just they go to town. Uh, Pam and Paula do remote reads, mm -hmm. and we have a, a form that we will actually go see the homeowner. And we ask permission because it's even though it's a remote read, it's still an invasion of somebody's privacy. Sure, yeah. So um, we have a form that lets them know that we have two mediums that are going to be doing a remote read, and 
sometimes the information that they get is really weird but then when they put it together yeah. well it, it's weird but then they put it together with, with Ashley's found and then all of a sudden it just it's like it's like painting it's like a Bob Ross picture it doesn't look right until all the colors start coming yeah. together you know mm -hmm. and then the homeowners start you know we we start investigating and we all talk about and it's just between the two intuitives and Ashley finding her research it's just amazing what they come up with and then we come in and, and investigate and then we put nice. it all we put it all together and we bring it to the bring it to the customer and hopefully we've solved their uh, problems uh, very good all right we don't have a lot of time left but first let me write the phone number down because I want you to call back next week 603-640-3091 if anybody has an answer for this call me next week because I'm very curious to know and I'm sure you'll remember this remember the make America great hats the mm -hmm. mega hats you saw them everywhere right and as a matter of fact you still see them so my question is how come I haven't seen one build back better hat <laughs> So if anybody knows the answer why, I'd appreciate, you know, I'd appreciate <laughs> filling me in because I don't have a clue if it's supposed to be, if it's that wonderful and stupendous. So <laughs> there you go. Again, I'm going to remind everyone, if you like what's going on in the country, fine. If you don't like what's going on in the country, fine. Call your elected politician, and that includes the White House. Joke Biden, I'm telling you. I emailed them like I'm gonna say last February or March, and I got a response like a month or two ago, just acknowledging that I emailed right. them. They don't address what you call for. But anyway, that's that. Again, David B, also known as the Readings Guy. Plus, I'm so excited. The Readings Guy dot com. Congratulations <laughs> on that. I'm very scared of technology. I shake when I do all this <laughs> stuff. I sweat, my hands perspire, I slip off the keyboard, <laughs> and I tremble. <laughs> the cat runs away from me. Right at 603-404-9338. Biffid at yahoo.com. B-I-F-F-I-D dot com. Contact with me anything you want comments questions. I'll be glad to respond to you. I'll respond to them all in the meantime uh, Tune in next week. We'll get your spirit soaring again. We'll get you closer to heaven little by little And don't forget you are a winner <laughs> <laughs>